We're going to be going to our off-grid cabin pretty soon, and I'm doing some tests on equipment that we're going to bring with us so I can find out how much solar and how much battery capacity I need to bring to run all the different appliances we're going to have. The one thing I'm messing with today is this 12-volt cooler refrigerator. It's like a big ice chest that has two compartments where you can have a fridge and a freezer or two fridges or two freezers, whatever you want to do but it is operated with 12 volt power. Of course, it comes with a power adapter that lets you run it on 110 if you want, but it's mainly a 12 volt refrigerator. So the first test I did was I wanted to find out if I could run this fridge off of a tool battery. And although the answer technically is yes, but it won't run it like this, I'm gonna have to get a step down converter to bring this down to 12 volts, because when I use this and I plug it to the fridge, the fridge does recognize that it's putting out about 20 volts and that is beyond the 12 volts that it wants and it's just not letting you do it. It doesn't blow the breaker or do anything like that, but it just won't run. It gives me an E1 error because it's not the right voltage. And that's great, that's fine. I just wanted to know if it could do it because this refrigerator actually has a battery you can buy for it. Stick it in the side, I'll show it to you in a minute, where you can just run this thing off of a battery and it will run up to like 10 hours in eco mode from my understanding. So this is done, I'm done with that, but I do have a power station over here. I'm gonna get this plugged into that on the 12 volt and I'm gonna see just how much power this consumes while it's bringing the fridge down to temperature. Cause that's gonna be the highest power consumption is when you first plug this thing in and it needs to bring it to from 70, 80, 90, whatever temperature it is, all the way down to the temperature that you set it. Once it gets to that temperature, and then especially if you've got you know items in here that are at that temperature also, it will maintain that temperature using a lot less wattage. Anyways, enough talking. Let me get this thing hooked up and I'll show you how cool this fridge is. So I got this cooler turned. This is the side where all the magic happens. I've got the DC plug plugged into the power station all ready to go like you would be plugging it in on your car. It is at room temperature. I don't have anything cold in it. I have not run this. So this is gonna be starting up and it's gonna be running at its most power to try to bring this down to temperature. If you haven't seen this specific refrigerator, I definitely recommend you take a look at it. It's very cool. This is the compartment I was telling you about that you can put a battery. They sell a battery that slides right into this and snaps into this, looks almost like this, but it's got some little push buttons on it and a little meter on it that tells you how much power it has. You just slap that thing in and you can run this refrigerator off of that battery, of course, until it runs down. The other cool thing though is, is if you have that battery plugged in here, you can also put like a solar panel on here using this port and all it would really need is like a 50 watt solar panel. You could have that laying on top if it's hot outside. It would be charging the battery and running the fridge. And if the sun goes behind the clouds or whatever and it's not generating as much power, well, it's really running off the battery. So you're just not charging maybe the battery as much as you would be. So that's one way to really increase it. I do plan on trying to get this battery and probably getting me just a little 50 watt solar panel that will lay on top of this so I can run this thing all day long in the sun. I think this is a really cool option, but if you don't have this, you can just use a power station. It's gonna start powering this thing up. As you can see here, it's saying 73 degrees and it's on max. This would be green if it was on eco, but it is white. It's showing that it's on max mode. And if you watch over here, it was running at about five watts or so with just the LEDs and so forth on and in standby. The compressor has kicked on. I hear the fan running. I think it's doing what it needs to do and it's pulling 35 watts of power. I think it's gonna pull more than that though. It's just starting up. And although it's very quiet, I do believe the compressor is actually running because I hear a tiny bit of like a gurgling sound, but these things are extremely quiet. So it's really hard to even know other than just the little bit of vibration you may feel, that's if the compressor's running or not, because they run on such low amount of wattage. So one of the things I do want to find out is, are these running like off an inverter type technology? Do they have variable speed compressors where they'll you know kick up the pressure or lower the pressure based upon the temperature? That I don't know. I would assume yes, because they use so little watts to run that compressor. And if you watch the wattage, sometimes it'd go up, sometimes it'd go down, but not low enough to be just the fan. So if you notice up here, I'll show you what I have it set to. I had this set to zero. So one side is a freezer, and the other side is a refrigerator. That's how I planned on using it, so that's how I have it set. I do see the temperature already dropping on this side. So I'm thinking that's 
that's about what it's going to pull. I think 42 watts is the highest I've seen, but it looks like it really is averaging around 40. And again, that is on the highest mode. That's what it's going to be pulling as it tries to get these temperatures down to what I said. It's. Now, once this gets down to temperature, this gets to zero, this gets to 36, then we're going to have the situation where the compressor is not going to be always running. It's going to be maintaining the temperature. So I also want to see once it's already at that temperature, how much power is it using? I do see it dropping. I'm gonna let it get down to temperature and we're gonna come back and see what it looks like. Oh, look at that, 63, 65. So did that thing kick into high gear? Is that the max mode kicking in? I definitely hear a little bit more noise coming out of this. About the same vibration. Very, very faint vibration though. Don't think it's really got any vibration unless you're really just barely touching it, trying to feel it, you wouldn't even know. So it looks like around 65 is where this one's getting when it comes to the max range. I have another cooler that's really a lot like this, but smaller, and it gets up to about 45 when it's cooling. And that's what I've watched in that. And then it drops down into the 30s or even in the 20s uh, when it's maintaining temperature. So the fact that this one gets up to 65, this one does have two sections. That might be part of the reason. So I'm gonna let this run, see if that changes, and then I'm also gonna look at it when it gets down to temperature to see what that looks like. All right, so I've let this run actually for quite a while. It is down to temperature, and if you notice down here, it's using about 30 watts. That seems to be what it's using when it's down to temperature. I don't know if that's just a fan running, which I would think that's a lot for a fan actually, because it's not like it's blowing that hard. So something's running in there more than just a fan. But again, it's not doing the 65 or whatever it was before. It's not even doing the 45 and it's not even in eco mode. So it does look like once it cools down, you're getting around 30 and then sometimes it'll kick on and go up into the 40s, like maybe 40, 42, but then it drops back down to 30. So I think that that's the wattage area that it's going to be playing in. Now what I want to do is put this in eco mode and see if that really does any difference. I'm just gonna have to watch and see. I'll come and check it in another hour or so. All right, so I've watched this thing on eco mode for a little bit, and what I've noticed it does is it will run at around 30 watts or so when it is running, and then it'll drop down to like three watts. So I think what eco mode does is it doesn't keep everything running all the time. It will turn it on and off to save power. So what I've noticed when it's in max mode is, you know, the lowest it gets is, you know, 25 or so watts. And it looks like it's really kind of keeping this stuff running a little bit all the time to try to keep these temperatures as close to what you have them set. I think eco mode allows it to kind of, you know, vary on the temperature just a little. And that may help save power because I have seen it drop down to like three watts and just sit there because the temperatures were already where they needed to be. And it just sat there. But I've got all the information I think I need, so I will put links to this refrigerator, this 12-volt refrigerator down in the description, and even to this power station that I'm using here. And I hope all of this information was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.